The original floating Rapala remains the largest selling lure in the history of walleye fishing. Everyone has one in their tackle assortment, along with other old classics like the Cordell Redfin and Bagley Bangalore. Of course, live bait rigs like the Lindy Rig have sold millions and millions too, along with spinner rigs of many designs and configurations. Hair jigs certainly are an old standard. Lures like the Rapala Husky Jerk, a suspending jerk bait, have also made their mark, ushering in a host of competitors. So too, shad wrap style crankbaits, including the Reef Runner and Berkeley Flicker Shad. But let's step away from those old standards to consider what might be called new age gold standard walleye lures. First up, we note the overall trend toward crankbaits with shad shapes as opposed to minnow shapes. The bigger, more robust profiles and vibration patterns given off by such designs generally work best all season long, save during winter on rivers and during some of the early season. So the two lures we're working with today are both balsa baits. So from Bagley, you've got the balsa shad, so with the shad shape right there, and the balsa minnow with the minnow shape right there. And you see the difference in the lips. The shad is gonna run just a little bit deeper, and it's gonna have a little bit more of a throbbing action. And coupled with the more, uh, the broader body, it's gonna give off more vibration. But nothing kind of works through the water exactly like balsa does. Just a real pulsating action. As chronicled by in fishermen editors, paddle tail swim baits have also become firmly etched into the repertoire of most walleye anglers. Paddle tails are as fundamental a lure category for walleyes as any other and trigger walleyes in most situations. They certainly work as a tool to search through weed growth. The advantages of heavier jig heads and paddle tail bodies measuring four or five inches long are many. The big advantage to the paddle tails, aside from being extremely attractive to fish, especially walleyes, is that you're fishing half ounce heads and three quarter ounce heads and four and five inch bodies most of the time in a situation like that. You can make gigantic casts, cover a lot of water. There he is. Oh, that's a good one right there. Paddle tail swim baits have also proven noteworthy as producers of big fish. That's what we're looking for. And again, and I've done this hundreds of times, but look at how they eat those things. It just completely fools a fish. Beautiful little bait, I love it. It's the second time, actually only the second time I fished it. But I've got a lot of experience with paddle tails all across the country. One of the deadliest options I've ever fished for big walleyes. This segment's brought to you by Eagle Claw. This segment brought to you by Abu Garcia. So, overall, many new age presentations are a bit more aggressive in nature than, say, tinkering and toodle doodling along with a minnow on a live bait rig. That's true of the application of lipless crankbaits typically designed as bass lures. Lures like the Bagley Ratlin B and the Rapala Rip and Rap make their mark while fishing super aggressively in ripping fashion or dialed back just a bit fished with a sharp pull up followed by a tight line drop back to the bottom. I've never seen one eat a lipless lure like that, but when you're pulling it up and letting it drip or fall down, I guess it's entirely possible. Wow. We also have old standards like the jigging wrap, a famous winter lure being applied in open water. We might call this category the gliders. Again, anglers often make long casts and fish the lure in lift drop fashion. We're um, fishing a suspended rock hump out here. Let it hit the ground, let that slack become tight, let it hit the bottom. And then we're just giving it a slow lift let it drop, slow lift, let it drop. So show them that more aggressive move too. Okay. Reel up that slack and then lift it a little bit higher, giving it a little bit more of an erratic movement to it. And a lot of times you'll just find that that fish attacks it on the fall. And when you go to set that hook again, that's when you'll notice the, the weight and you'll have the fish on. The glider category also includes the Berkeley Snap Jig. So I didn't get any fish going on about six, seven casts with the paddle tail. So I switched to another lure that I've been doing really well with the last couple of years. 
and that is the Berkeley snap jig. It's the guy that's got the little wings on it right there. <laughs> and so I usually just fish it with a four inch grub. So basically I was, my thinking was is that a uh, small mouse might want to bite that uh, and might ignore that paddle tail, but just the opposite happened. Of course, again, this has been also been really good for walleye. Old standard gold standards remain great options at times, but as you've seen, we have plenty of new age There's gold standards to put walleyes in the boat or on the bank. Big fish of the day, last fish of the day. Way to go, man. You're good with that jig. 